Diabetes, one of the chronic diseases that has seen a number of those affected rapidly rising over the years, is what we are curious to learn about today. As I walk down the hospital corridors, I'm at peace knowing that at least I've tested negative for this disease. The doctor here walks us down the reality of diabetes. I'm uh, Dr. Nsoko Bonfas. I'm a medical officer in charge of the Equity Affair Nairobi West Branch. Uh, today, um, uh, currently I'm practicing as a general practitioner, which means um, I'm not specialized into being a specialist, uh, but then I've done a certificate from the Loba Linda University, which is a, a management of lifestyle diseases, why we are here today. Uh, diabetes in, a, in, a, in the simplest format is a uncontrolled, uncontrolled blood sugar levels in your body which can be caused by so many factors. So in a nutshell is when the body is not able to control your sugar levels. So that's what you call diabetes. First, first of all, generally when you talk about diabetes, there are two types of diabetes. That is a type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. But there are other, some, uh, uh, we call them uh, other forms of diabetes. But then the conversation normally narrows in type 1 and type 2 diabetes, which we'll focus on. Uh, uh, which will come to focus on. So there is type 3, uh, uh, type 3, which we call gestational diabetes. We have what we call maturity onset or MODI diabetes, but I'm not going into those details. So our attention is uh, type 1 and type 2 diabetes, where type 1 diabetes is where you don't have, you have little or you don't have insulin. And we'll have a conversation on what maybe that means, where type 2 diabetes is then a situation in which you have insulin, but it's not working for you. So you call it insulin resistance diabetes. So type 1 normally comes early on an age, while type 2 comes late uh, in age, when we advance in age for so many reasons. Because you have no more insulin, you are born with insulin, but then your body becomes resistant. If you have believed that diabetes is an old people or a rich people disease, you are far from the truth. It has no favorites. Anyone can be affected if care is not taken. Yeah, so there's that misnomer that uh, you have to uh, diabetes that this is of the old people, of the rich people, but that is not the reality. Actually, as we speak, we have youths. Uh, when I talk about youths, I mean 20 to, to 30, depends on how we look at it. We have seen those cases of young people who have developed diabetes, specifically the younger generation, and I know as a... Uh, as we are talking here today, most youths who will be listening to us will say diabetes is a, is a topic of the old people. We are saying one in ten people globally are suffering from diabetes, the elderly people. That's the statistics. But then the, the same statistics, the International Federation of Diabetes mentioned that we are seeing the youth generation rising to two in ten. So yes, we are saying it's a disease of the old people, but then the younger generation is catching up quite, quite fast. So then the other conversation is in regards to in Kenya. Kenya has been ranked actually, the other time I saw 31st in Africa. Then uh, the same statistics ranked Kenya mentioning that the rate is increasing as we increase what we call metabolic syndrome, which we will not discuss today, which is related to obesity, weight, and other concerns, which I have really increased this uh, incidence of diabetes. So yes, age has been the major factor traditionally, but we are seeing other factors like diet, among other factors that also affect the youth coming into play, leading to diabetes becoming a pandemic across the age group. That's the reality whereby we are saying um, children uh, can be born with diabetes and the majority of the cases, up to actually more than 90%, it's type 1 diabetes. So we call it type 1 diabetes uh, because a child is born and they start using insulin. So basically it means uh, you have your baby in their even first year of life, second year of life, third year of life, they start receiving medication to control their sugars. So they, they get injections. Mm -hmm. There's currently no oral medications for insulin, so they get injections for life. And they can live a long life, so that is the type 1 diabetes. And like the type 2, which comes in advanced age, where your insulin that you had no more starts to get uh, what you call resistance. And that's why I'm here to focus how can the youth avoid that because we'll be seeing shortly how you are born normally, at 30 years you are okay, then at 36 years when now you have started earning your salary then you develop diabetes. Mm -hmm. Why is that happening? Yet you are born without diabetes. Uh, we look at it, uh, the major risk factors for diabetes. 
Uh, of course, the first one in the list is age. And uh, it's good even the youth we should be able to know that we are also advancing in age. Uh, the other risk is genetics. So genetic exposure can lead to either form of diabetes. The burden of the disease is not to be taken lightly. Think that the numbers around Africa and in Kenya are increasing, especially among the youths. One in ten people worldwide, especially the adult population, are suffering from diabetes. And the latest uh, research shows that 90% of those are suffering from type 2 diabetes. And type 2 diabetes means they were not born with direct diabetes, but then they accumulated diabetes in their teenage, in their youthful, in their, uh, in their adulthood. So that is why we need to converse on this particular uh, topic. So even in Kenya, if you narrow down the statistics to Kenya, is that 4.6% of Kenyans are suffering from diabetes. That means you have 100 people, 5 are suffering from diabetes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Kenya is really being ranked on top when it comes to diabetic prevalence or the number of cases of diabetes in the world. What is very important is to prevent yourself from getting diabetes through adapting a right lifestyle. A key step everyone should take is going to test for diabetes. The test takes less than five minutes and is painless. Early detection saves life when we talk about cancer. A similar story applies when you talk about diabetes and even any other lifestyle disease. Because when you talk about early detection, basically it means we're able to pick it before complications. And as I started by mentioning what triggers or what are the risks for diabetes, we realize most of those risks are modifiable. That you can modify them in your family. As a youth, when you are married, you can modify with your family. As a, an adult, wherever you stay, you can modify those risks. So why we are conversing about this is that Largely, the risks for diabetes, majority of them apart from age and genetics, are modifiable. So in management, we apply the same principle. So in management of diabetes, we cannot cure diabetes as I mentioned, but then we can reverse the risks, we can manage the risks to an extent that the levels of your sugars can go back to pre-diabetic range. So that means if you have diabetes, you are taking your drugs, if we can work on your risks, then we can be able to modify all of them. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. So when I manage a diabetic patient today, the first thing is we do risk assessment. We look at what predisposed you to develop diabetes. If it's a family history, genetics, then we say much, you cannot do much to that factor. If it's another factor is when, uh, when we talk about age, you cannot change your age, Stephanie. But now, we look at the other top risks apart from those two. And we, if it's alcohol intake, maybe it's a youth who was taking alcohol in, and they are now 40 and they have the diabetes, we start to modify that risk. If it's cigarette smoking, we modify that risk. If it's lack of exercise, we advise them to exercise routinely on a daily basis for 30 minutes daily or 250 minutes in a week. If the issue is a, um, or stress, then we request them or we advise them to manage their stress levels so that they can be able to prevent diabetes. If they don't sleep, because sleep is also a factor, so we advise them to sleep uh, for more hours so that the body can undergo metabolism so that the sugars are controlled. If the issue is, a, let's say, a simple factor as water intake, Stefan, there are people who don't drink water in Nairobi mm -hmm. and you cannot manage your sugars when you are dehydrated. So we advise them to take water routinely, eight glasses a day. And I will tell you as a doctor, there are people who have put in those modalities of lifestyle modifications to an extent they stop taking diabetic drugs. If we detect it in early stages, we can modify majority of the risks that they can live even drug free. But the most important thing is that early detection so that we can modify those risks before they get into a zone where you cannot modify any of those risks. But above doing all that, drug compliance is very important. Mm -hmm. That on a routine basis, you have to go to your doctor, they evaluate the drugs you are using to see whether they are working, so that if the drugs are underdose, we add more drugs. And by chance, there are people who are taking drugs and their sugars have already been controlled by risk modifications. Then we can eliminate the drugs and advise them to observe strict compliance of the protocol that is on lifestyle protocol mm -hmm. uh, the challenge with that number one is a uh, false hope uh, most of this you realize Stephanie and un uncontrolled um, uh, there's no science that you can be able to describe and say this particular supplement has been approved that it can bring back your sugar levels down because diabetes is a complex scientific disease 
so most of these um, um, sorry to say uh, supplements that are being sold in the in the in the dark market is that you are given you put all your hopes in that supplement and some of them are not uh, uh, bad they are good uh, supplements nutritional supplements but the challenge is that the too much emphasis that you can take this moringa and you will be okay your diabetes will disappear your cancer will disappear that is the challenge with uh, those uh, supplements so my advice is that when you get those prescriptions go to the nearest healthcare worker they get they give you the advice so that there's a way you can actually blend alternative treatment and the conventional treatment. With WHO predicting that the prevalence of diabetes in Kenya will rise to 4.5% by 2025 from the current 3.3%, we therefore ought to exercise caution. Prevention is better than cure. Stephanie Ayata for Health Machinani.